Hey everyone, today we're going to look at the USACO 2018 Bronze December first problem, which is mixing milk. Farming is competitive business, particularly milk production. Farmer John figures that if he doesn't innovate in his milk production methods, his dairy business could get creamed. Fortunately, Farmer John has a good idea. His three prized dairy cows, Bessie, Elsie, and Mildred, each produce milk with a slightly different taste, and he plans to mix these together to get the perfect blend of flavors. To mix the three different milks, he takes three buckets containing milk from the three cows. The buckets may have different sizes and may not be completely full. He then pours bucket 1 into bucket 2, then bucket 2 into bucket 3, then bucket 3 into bucket 1, then bucket 1 into bucket 2, and so on in a cyclic fashion, for a total of 100 pour operations, so the 100th pour would be from bucket 1 into bucket 2. When Farmer John pours from bucket A into bucket B, he pours as much milk as possible until either bucket A becomes empty or bucket B becomes full. Please tell Farmer John how much milk will be in each bucket after he finishes all 100 pours. So there are a few things that we can notice about our problem right after reading it. So the first thing is that there are three buckets total. And that's always going to remain the same because there's a bucket for each cow. And each bucket has a starting amount and a capacity. So the starting amount would be indicated by the second number in a line. So for example, three. And the capacity would be indicated by the first number in each line. The next thing we can notice is that we have to keep pouring from a bucket to its next in a cyclic fashion. So we'd go from bucket one to two, and then two to three, and three to one, and one to two, two to three, three to one, and so on and so forth for 100 times. So eventually we'll end up pouring our last set from one to two. And we should keep in mind that when we're pouring from a bucket to another, we have to pour milk until the next bucket is full or the bucket being poured has exhausted its, its milk. So for example, if we're pouring from bucket one to bucket two and bucket two fills up, then we have to keep whatever is remaining in bucket one. And then let's take another example. If we are pouring from bucket two into bucket three and we can pour all of bucket two into bucket three, then we have to do that. So let's start by opening our editor. So we're in Visual Studio Code. You can just create a new folder and we're just going to create a Python file to start with. So we can just save this and call it USACO 2018 December Bronze 1.py. And next what we have to do is we also have to create the .in file. That's how we're going to get input. So go ahead and create that file. And we're going to call it mixmilk.in. So we can just say mixmilk.in. And then what we have to do for just testing purposes is we have to fill in our sample data. So we were provided with 10, 3, 11, 4, and 12, 5. So we can just take that and put that into our sample file. Now the next thing to do after we've created our Python file is to figure out how we're going to attempt to solve this problem. So let's devise an algorithm. So the first thing that we can notice is that because we have three buckets, we can refer to them as in, in the form of an array. That way, the zeroth index will refer to the first bucket, the first index will refer to the uh, second bucket, and the second index will refer to the third bucket. And what we can do is instead of just creating one array to represent the each bucket, we're going to create two arrays. So one of these arrays is going to represent the uh, amounts in each bucket, so the current amount of milk per bucket. And then the second array is going to represent the capacity of each bucket. That way we can keep, we can make sure that we're not filling a bucket past its capacity. So we're going to create two arrays. And in Python, these are lists. So two arrays, capacities, and amounts. Now amounts is the array that we're going to constantly change 100 times, but capacity is going to remain the same because that's just going to tell us uh, the capacity of the current bucket that we're on. Now the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to have a loop that goes 100 times because we have to do this 100 times. So repeat 100 times. And every repetition, we're going to get the next bucket that we haven't poured yet. So we get the next bucket 
And let's say we refer to that index as cur. And we have to make sure that cur is being modded by three because if we keep increasing cur, so we go from zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And if we go past three, now we're above the length of our amounts list. So what we will have to do is we'll have to take cur mod three to make sure that we're within the three buckets. So we get our next bucket cur. And after we get our next bucket cur, we also need to get the bucket that we're going to pour into. So we have to get the bucket after, which we can call next. So cur and next are going to be the two indices that we use to refer to the bucket that we're pouring from and the bucket that we're pouring into. And what we can do just to start off with is we can try to pour all the contents of the current bucket into the next bucket. So we can just pour uh, milk, pour all the milk from cur into next. Now you may be wondering, how do we account for the fact that the buckets may overflow? Well, that's the next thing we're going to do. Now that we've poured all the milk from current into next, we're going to check if next has overflowed. And the way we do that is we check if the current amount of milk in the index at next is greater than the same index in capacities. And if that is the case, we're going to take away that amount and move it back into current. That way, next is filled up and current still has the remaining number, the remaining amount of milk. So we can check if there is overflow in the bucket at index next we can move that overflow back to the bucket at index current so this is basically our algorithm that we have to do and finally we can just write the final amount of milk in each bucket and that's essentially our algorithm. It's pretty simple. And now we're going to go ahead and code this. So we can start off by creating our two lists, capacities and amounts, and we'll make them empty lists because we're going to populate them after reading our file. So we'll say capacities is equal to an empty list. And amounts is equal to an empty list as well. The next thing to do is to open our file to open mixed milk and to get all the capacities and amounts and populate our two lists. So we can use with open and then mix milk dot in and we're only reading this file so we can just write r we can alias it as f f for file and there's going to be three lines total in our file so we can just iterate through a range of three so for i in range three and if we look at the format for each line each line is going to be a number which is the capacity separated by a space and the final number on a line is the amount so what we're going to do is we're going to call a string split using the separator, uh, using a space as our separator. And that's going to get us a string 10 and a string 3. And then we're going to assign, we're going to add the int casted version of our capacity to the capacities list and same with the amount. So if we go back to our program for i in range 3, we can say that we have a variable temp is equal to an array or a list that is the split version of our next red line. So f dot read line dot split at a space. And now we have to add two capacities and two amounts. So capacities is going to append the int casted version of the first index at temp, which is zero. And then amounts is going to do the same thing, but instead we're going to append the int casted version of temp at index one, because that's the amount. And that wraps it up for opening our file and getting all our data. So now we have all our capacities and all our amounts of milk currently in all of our buckets. So the next thing to do is to repeat 100 times and do this following code right here. So we can write a for loop for i in range 100. And every iteration, i is going to be a next number. So from zero, then to one, to two, or three, all the way to 99. So we can assign a variable cur equal to i mod 3. And the reason we're doing this is because we're making sure that cur is always an index between 0 and 2. So it'll go 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, and so on and so forth. And the next thing to do is to create our next variable. And we're going to write this as nxt. nxt is equal to the index at cur. 
plus 1. And then we mod that by 3 as well, because if cur happens to be 2, then next is going to be equal to 2 plus 1, which is 3. And 3 is not a viable index, so we have to mod that by 3 as well. So that will get a 0 in that case. So now we have our two indices. Cur refers to the index at which we're pouring from, and next refers to the index at which we're pouring into. So the next thing to do is to pour all the milk from cur into next. So what we can do is we can say that the amounts at the next index is going to add all the milk from the current index. So amounts at cur index. So that way we've poured all the milk from current into next. And if there's an overflow, we have to make sure that we move all of that overflow back into amounts at cur. So before we do that, we have to actually empty amounts at cur. So we can say amounts bracket cur is equal to zero. That way we can fill in any overflow if necessary. So now we check to see if there is indeed overflow at the index next. And the way we do that is we check if the amounts at index next is greater than the capacity at index next. So if amounts at next is greater than capacities at next, and if that's the case, there is overflow. So we have to move the overflow back into amounts at cur. So we can say amounts at cur is equal to capacities at next subtracted from amounts at next. So amounts at next minus capacities at next. And finally, we assign amounts at next equal to capacities at next just to level it off. So amounts at next is equal to capacities at next. So that's basically it for our algorithm. And the final thing we need to do is write to our out file. So we can say with open mix milk dot out, and we're writing this time. And we can alias our file as f. And there's going to be three amounts in our amounts list that we have to write. So we can say for i in amounts. For every amount in our amounts, we can write that particular amount and follow it with a new line. So we can say f dot write. We're going to use some string formatting here, and we include a new line, and then we include our amount. So let's go ahead and run our program, and let's see what happens. So our program just finished running. So let's take a look at the output. So we get 0, 10, 2 for the input 10, 3, 11, 4, 12, 5. And let's see if that's the same thing as in here. And that is the same thing. Our sample output is 0, 10, 2. So it seems like our program works. So let's go ahead and upload this to test to make sure if it does indeed work. So now we're back at the USACO portal. So what we're going to do is we're going to enter our language. And we were using Python 3.4. And we can choose our source file. So if you head over to your to wherever you saved your files. And just upload your file and go ahead and submit your solution. And now we're going to see if this grading is successful. So it appears that we got all of the test cases correct. So thanks guys for watching this video and I hope that was helpful.